Hey, it's Kish from Porygon Tube, and unfortunately I'm not joined by Roland today. He is overseas, so I will be riding solo on this commentary. And in fact, I'm commentating my own match, my top four match. That's me on the left, playing my Drampa Lycan Rock deck, versus David on the right, playing Metagross GX. So, I actually played David in round four, I think it was, and I managed to beat him. But I think part of that was the surprise factor. He wasn't really aware of what my deck could do. And so this will be a much closer match, I think. And it's actually a very close matchup. Basically, if Metagross gets set up, if David manages to get two Metagross into play, there's nothing in my deck to gain one hit a Metagross, except for maybe a dangerous rogue with Lycanroc GX. So, but uh, David is able to play around that. Dangerous rogue does 50 damage times the amount of bench Pokemon your opponent has. So with four bench, a choice band and a Kukui, I can actually get up to 250. Or if David has a full bench of five, then Dangerous Rogue GX with Lycanroc GX will knock out a Metagross in one hit. But it's fairly unlikely that that situation will occur. Basically, by the time David gets two Metagross set up, most likely they'll have taken a few cheap prizes, either on Beldums, Vulpix, or Tapu Lele. So his bench size will be decreasing as the game goes on making it less likely for me to be able to one-hit KO Metagross. So essentially my hope is to rush him and hope that he has to bench um, more than one Tapu Lele or an extra Shaman. So basically the way this matchup works, as we see David starts with the optimal play of Tapu Lele for one to tag, going to grab a Bridget probably and put three Beldum on his bench, so that's a pretty optimum start, and he is going first, so it's a big advantage for him. So, as I said, I'm basically going to get one free prize on a Vulpix, one, two free prizes on a Tapu Lele, possibly a Beldum, so that's four prizes, so, but it's very hard for me to take my last two prizes with my deck. Uh, it's, my deck's all about speed, Berserk maxes out at 180, can't one-hit KO a Metagross, while Metagross can one-hit KO my Drampers. So we'll see how this goes, and so pretty scary for me to see David set up. Luckily, I do start with a double colorless. I'm able to ultra ball here. Probably going to grab a rock rough, and that's indeed what I get. I just want to try and take care of those Beldums before they become Metagross. So searching through my deck, unfortunately, half of it seems to be upside down, which is a bit annoying. But anyway. Just checking what my Lycan Rock line is because that's going to be the key to this matchup. How many Bloodthirsty Eyes can I get off to bring up the Beldums or the Tapu Leles to get the knockouts? So this is a very close matchup, and my plan is just to rush here. Okay, so Floatstone probably going to go on the Rock Rough. Okay, actually I choose to attach it to the Drampa. Not 100% sure why I did that, maybe it'll come to me later, but I get a Magma Base, which is good, and a Lysander, which is great, so I'll be able to get some prizes the next turn. I'm probably just going to have to settle for Righteous Edge here, and hope that David doesn't have a Rare Candy Metagross, and I actually passed there, that was a mistake, I think. There's no reason not for, for me not to Righteous Edge for 20, but I don't think it's relevant. I don't think there's anything that 40 hit points left on Vulpix is relevant for. So David has a Matang, so let's see what else he can do here. Not sure if he has a supporter, and he actually chooses to Beacon. So I, I didn't quite catch his hand. I saw one Metagross GX in there. So he's going to grab a Metagross and a Matang. So this is good for me. I'll be able to take care of uh, one Matang. And a Bloodthirsty Eyes here. Bring up the Matang and Sycamore. So I believe Matang has 90 hit points. So going to need to get a basic down here. And I think I found an Ultra Ball, so probably just going to grab another Rock Ruff. Or perhaps a Drampa. It depends how risky I want to play this. Grabbing a Rock Ruff will be a bit more risky because 
potentially double wreck any Metagross could see my could see my Drampa get knocked out with a choice ban, but I figure I gotta play a little bit risky in this matchup anyway, so I don't mind getting a Rockruff. I'd just rather just take out uh, the Beldums or the Matangs before they become Metagross. And so we're gonna see 150 come down here and Choice ban on the Rock Ruff, on the Lycan Rock rather, that is relevant. That means I can two hit KO and Metagross with Drampa's Claw Slash, which does 110 for a fighting and a double colorless. And so let's see what David can do on his turn. He gets another Matang down. Looks like he's got a Sycamore in a fairly large hand. But does he have access to a rare candy? Attaches a choice ban to the Beldum. Uh, he's got two Metagross in hand, so he might be a bit a bit reluctant to Sycamore that hand away. Uh, actually, that was a Tapu Lele, forgive me. So, And that is great for me to see. So that makes my path to victory a lot easier now because Tapu Lele is fairly easy for Drampa to take out with Berserk doing 180 or even 150 now that that one has damage on it for a Magma base. So those are going to be four prizes, and then the Vulpix is never going to evolve into Ninetales or anything, so that's going to be the last prize that I need to take my five prizes. So that's what I was saying. If he was, if he's forced to bench an extra Tapu Lele or a Shaman, that makes my path to victory a lot easier. And looks like he gets another Beldum down. That 20 damage might be relevant for a Dangerous Rogue with a Choice Band and four bench in the future. But doesn't look like he's David's got a medal from hand, and he actually chooses to attach to the Matang. Possibly might have liked to see him attach to the Beldum there, just to hedge his bets a little bit. Especially because I've got a Rock Ruff there that's ready to Bloodthirsty Eyes when it evolves into Lycan Rock. So by attaching to the Beldum, he'd sort of hedge his bets a little bit uh, and put me in a put, make my decision a little bit more difficult whether to target down the energy or the Pokemon more likely to evolve to Metagross. So he chooses to attach the metal. And looks like I have a VS Seeker. There may be a Lysander in the discard pile, I think. And... Okay, so setting up for a Dangerous Rogue here by attaching that energy. And yes, looks like there's a Lysander in the discard pile. So I still do play the two Lysander on top of the Bloodthirsty Eyes. So, and we'll see a knockout here. So, this puts me in a pretty good spot here. But still not out of the woods. David can definitely apply a huge amount of pressure, but oh, unfortunately, he just has to Kukui here. So, that's not a great supporter for him at this stage of the game. And he might be forced into just beaconing again. So this is, the, this is the unfortunate thing about Metagross is that it can be a little bit slow because you're purely reliant on stage 2's and yes, David is going to beacon looks like he's going for a Delmise and a Metagross so he might be out of Matangs now uh, since 2 have been knocked out and I've even got a Hex Maniac in hand So Max Elixir hits for me, which is great. And deciding whether to Shaman or Hex here, I think Hex might be a pretty strong play because then there's no way for, for David to knock me out. He's only got one energy on the Beldum, so even if he gets Rare Candy Metagross, he can't Geotech system, and I do Hex. So there's no way for David to get a knockout on my Drampa this turn. And he's actually forced to promote the Tapu Lele. So I believe I have three prizes remaining because I've knocked out two Matangs and a Vulpix.
So let's see what David can do here. He's in a really tough spot. Okay, so just going to attach to the Tapu Lele, threaten an energy drive for next turn, and then if it doesn't get knocked out because I don't have a choice band, then uh, he can just retreat to a Metagross. So don't mind that play at all. Uh, interesting, he's Sycamore but didn't play his Max Potion. I would have liked to see him play his Max Potion there, but it doesn't matter anyway. He just scoops up his cards, didn't get a Metagross, so... Uh, just going to move on to game two, and I think that's fair enough there. He possibly could have mounted a comeback, but he would have needed a lot of cards off that Sycamore. So I take a pretty quick game one, and that's pretty much how it can go. You just rush the Metagross deck, but David, I think, drew pretty poorly there. Even after the beacons and things, he just couldn't get the Metagross out. So uh, things went pretty favorably for me there. And we'll see what David can muster in game two to try and turn this around. So, yeah, basically, if David can ever get two Metagross set up, or even three Metagross set up, and just keep retreating between them and have no other free prizes on his board for me to take in order to win the game, then there's almost nothing I can do really. Uh, just because Metagross is so tanky, and that's true for Metagross versus a lot of decks. Once it gets set up, it's just so powerful being able to Geotech system, retreat, uh, tank it, sorry, retreat to your next Metagross, Max Potion, and then Geotech onto the active and continue to attack. It's, it's a very powerful combo and very strong in the meta at the moment. So, a good meta call, and it's carried David really well. He's in top four here, he's played really well throughout the day, and Okay, so he will be going first again. And, okay, it looks like my hand is Tapu Lele, two shamans and no supporter. So I'm deciding what to try and do. And I actually start with the Tapu Lele, which I don't like. I think that's a bit of a greedy play, especially because I don't have a supporter. I'm hoping to draw something off the shamans, but I can't even play out that many cards. So I think that's a pretty greedy play. I would have that's sort of one of those spots you don't you never want to start with Shaman, but that's probably a spot where you should just start with Shaman. Tapu Lele, one to tag for a supporter and get going. Uh, David again starts with that Volpix, which is very nice for him. He, he even has an extra Beldum, so he might just get four Beldum out with this Bridget here, and that's gonna be really threatening. And it looks like he has one Beldum prize, possibly. But that's not going to be a huge deal for him. Just getting the Vulpix start with uh, Bridget on the first turn is just pretty much all he can hope for. And he actually... Okay, so he's attached to the active, which means that a double colorless from me would knock out that Vulpix. So he possibly needs to retreat here. And yeah, so he's going to retreat to the other Vulpix. And just pass. Okay, so, and I top deck a choice ban, which is not very useful. Set up for three. Okay, so I do draw a Sycamore here. And now I have a tough decision. And yep, David correctly points out that I didn't put the 20 damage on from Magma Base. And sometimes it's easy to forget that damage with the Magma Base, especially if you're not looking for Berserk damage. If you're looking to put stuff on for Berserk damage, then you always remember, but if, you, if you're just playing cards, you sometimes can forget. So, we'll see a Sycamore here. Unfortunately, you have to discard a Double Colorless. Now, play the Town Map, and it doesn't look like I hit any other Basics. Nothing too major prize there. Yeah, so no other basics here, so this is a really rough start for me. No Drampers or anything. And... Attach the Floatstone, I'm just going to have to pass here. So, attaching that Floatstone, just in case David combos off and knocks out the Tapu Lele, that'll give me a free retreater, possibly. So... Okay. 
So let's see if David can draw the rare candy Metagross here. Uh, at the very least, from his point of view, not seeing a Drampa ready to go is great. So he knows he's under no immediate pressure. And he plays down a Matang. He has a rare candy, but does he have the Metagross? Is that an Ultra Ball? It is an Ultra Ball, so he will have access to a Metagross this turn. So great start for David here. Uh, and this is very threatening. So yep, there we see the rare candy Metagross come down. It's going to be able to geotech onto the Vulpix. Either okay, so he chooses not to there, uh, possibly fearing a knockout from Tapu Lele. But I think a bigger deal for him there would have just been to be able to retreat the Vulpix and then start attacking with the Metagross. But okay, but you can see it either way. Not geotaching there is fine, just to preserve the Vulpix put pressure on me to, to try and force the knockout so I think there's arguments either way and I'm just I have to end there I can't afford to let David get out multiple Metagross and also my hand was pretty ordinary and I'll just be looking for some basics and maybe Max Elixir and energy so there's Max Elixir plenty of energy and Dramp off the last card so here we go Max Elixir hits so that's where Max Luxor can come and really clutch. And now I got an interesting decision. Do I just knock out the Vulpix with the Tapu Lele or do I throw up my Drampa? And I think probably taking the Tapu Lele knockout would be better. Okay. But actually it doesn't look like I have a draw supporter for next turn. So I'm just going to have to Sky Return here. Which is pretty unfortunate. I would have just liked to knock out the Vulpix there. Uh, but yeah, no draw supporter for next turn. Although I could have just taken a... Uh, yeah, I didn't want to take a Sycamore off the prizes, I guess, because there's so many double colors in my hand. So, pretty awkward. Possibly should have just knocked out the Vulpix, though, and just been a bit more aggressive in that spot, I think. because I think I'm, I'm so far behind at this point. I think I just need to be aggressive in order to try and win. Okay, so David's spreading out his energy and he's just going to beacon here. Okay. So... So this is where if I... Guess I can take the knockout with a Vulpix now, but I've let David beacon here. So I think I should have just taken the knockout, taken a VS Seeker and then end. That would have been a pretty decent play on the last turn and I think that was a mistake from me. But this is why we do these things, live and we learn. And so now, just trying to play out cards so I can set up with Shaman. And set up for two. And I'm pretty sure that Drampa should have 20 damage on it from the Magma Base. Because Magma Base has been in play from turn 1. So I missed the 20 damage there. I don't think it's relevant. It could be relevant if David has a Metagross to Giga Hammer but doesn't have a Choice Band. But in fact just has a Kukui. Then that's where it would be relevant. So hopefully that situation doesn't arise. Because that is actually quite significant that that Drampa doesn't have 20 damage on it, so we both missed it there. Uh, probably more my bad than anything else, since it is my Magma base that's in play. And we see the end come down. So fortunately I'm able to continue disrupting the Metagross off the beacons, but I think eventually my luck's going to run out, because David just needs to draw Ultra Ball, really. Okay, 
So probably going to bench that Rockruff. No reason not to, I don't think. I choose to hold it. Uh, not too sure why. Uh, possibly just should have benched it there. There's no reason to hold the rock rough in that spot, I don't think. So David going to bring up the Metagross, signaling that he does have access to a, uh, an attack this turn. So he should be able to double Geotech system here, even attach from hand and one Geotech system. And But does he have the choice band for the knockout? Or even a Professor Kukui would do the job. So there we see the double Geotech. So Metagross, playing the Psychic Energy just to be able to use Tapu Cure GX. Okay, so he's actually targeting down the Rockruff. Fearing maybe a dangerous rogue. <coughs> okay. And here we go. There's not a whole, I don't really have a whole lot here. Uh, VS Seeker Energy. And I'm just going to have to hex here, try and buy myself a turn. And yep, there's a hex. And I had an energy in hand there. And didn't attach it. Uh, possibly trying to conserve, since it is my only energy. But I think I'm just always attaching that energy somewhere, either to the Dramp or the Rock Ruff. I'm playing a little bit too conservatively at this point, I think. Uh, no sense in preserving resources here once David has gotten so far set up. I think it's just better to be aggressive here. And yep, so there's a retreat and max potion. So David effectively cancelling out my turn. And he's going to beacon very strong. So going to get his third Metagross into play. And the writing's on the wall for me. I still could win, potentially. Uh, there's the Vulpix, the Tapu Lele, and if I can get off a dangerous rogue... With a choice band and Kakui, that's going to be a knockout. Okay, so top deck Sycamore. And I might choose to just attach to the Tapu Lele, take the knockout on the Vulpix, be, be a little bit risky, but I can even Kukui here, but then I won't have access to Kukui on the following turn, but I guess that might be alright. Just checking how many VS Seekers I have, and I can actually take a VS Seeker off the prize, so I think probably best to Kukui, hoping I draw an energy to power up a dangerous rogue for next turn, but then by the same token, if I do knock out the Vulpix, then I can't use dangerous rogue with a choice band and Kukui for a knockout, so it's it's really awkward. And I do Kukui, draw two, and get a Lysander and a VS Seeker, two pretty good cards actually, but I think if David just plays with Metagross and nothing else, there's nothing I can do to win this game. So I'm just hoping... Okay, so just going to evolve, not use the ability. And going to take a knockout here. Take the VS Seeker. So at this point, I'm really hoping for David to bench another Pokemon. Because if he doesn't, if he just plays with these three Metagross, as I said, there's nothing I can do to the one-hit KO Metagross, and he can just steamroll through my, through my field. 
and I didn't play the choice band from my hand onto the lichen rock just in case of this scenario of field blower comes down. And does David have access to a choice band? Let's see. So there we see the double G attack come down. And it looks like he's debating where to put an energy. So yep, attaches to the bench. Metagross, going to Ultra Ball here. He's going to grab a Shaman, so this actually opens the door. He's digging for a Choice Band. You can't blame him for that, but this opens the door for a dangerous Rogue play from me. So I'm not sure how much I like this play from David because it gives me a win condition now. Uh, I could even go around the Metagross now. I can knock out a Shaman and a Tapu Lele. So there we see the Choice Band. Okay, so he's going to grab a Lysander. And he actually brings up the, the Dramper and takes a knockout. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, that's a slightly risky play. Again, Dramper can't one hit. A Metagross, so if he'd taken the Lycan Rock, because 180 with the 20 damage from the Mangle base there, I think I probably would have just scooped up my cards. And I actually top deck an energy, looks like, so I will be able to get a knockout here. So there's a fighting energy. Choice Band versus Seeker. Gonna grab Kakui here, draw two cards. Ultra Ball's nice. So I think David's down to three prizes at this point. And gonna Ultra Ball. Probably gonna grab a Dramper here. Uh, that's gonna help me close out the game. And I'm not sure how many Elixirs I've played at this point. If I can hit an Elixir and double colorless, potentially Berserk could win me the game. So this is what I was saying about David giving me a window here. If he hadn't benched the Shaman, if he just attacked for 150, uh, I wouldn't have been able to knock out his, his Metagross, and he could have just cycled them in Max Potion. But then again, I don't know how many Max Potion David has left. He might be running low on them, so that's why he chose to be a bit more aggressive there. So going to bench the Dramper, uh, I think once again, forget to put the 20 damage on the Dramper. And there we go, Dangerous Rogue GX, 4 bench, Choice Band in Kukui is 250, and that's going to be a KO, so all of a sudden, the, the match has turned on its head here. And just debating what to get off the prizes. Uh... Not sure why I'm taking Lycan Rock. I don't have a Rock Ruff down or access to one. Possibly should have just taken a Sycamore there. Uh, but maybe playing the long game a little bit. Hoping to get a Rock Ruff down next turn. Okay. So. David going to be able to take the KO here. He does have uh, that extra energy attachment that he did last turn. And he's going to end. So this is a big end. If he doesn't get another Metagross here, then he can't attack with Giga Hammer back to back. And he's only ending himself to three, so this could be a big swing here. But by the same token, there's not a lot on my board at this point.
Okay, so this is going to be a huge draw for both of us. Uh, looks like David hits the rescue stretch a massive, and he gets the Metagross down, so that could, that should seal him the game. Provided, uh, so, looks like my three cards are actually excellent cards, except that I want to attach the energy and play the Ultra Ball, which I can't do, so, uh, I'm in a tough spot here, might have to take a gamble and just attack with Tapu Lele here. And my second Shaman's in the discard pile, so I have no access to support Pokemon. So I think just attacking with Tapu Lele probably is the best play. And that's what I'm going to do. Going to energy drive for 100. Uh, David doesn't immediately have the knockout. He needs... A Kukui or a Choice Band on that bench Pokemon, and he actually top decks the Choice Band. So that's going to be the game for David. Uh, he had a Sycamore anyway to dig, so not too unlikely that he would get that. So David takes game two. So this series is going to a game three. Very close so far. And let's see who's going to pull this one out. So pretty much that, that's what happens when Metagross sets up, and you don't... Metagross will just steamroll you every time. Uh, David did open the door for me with the Dangerous Rogue uh, Choice Band Kukui play. I think without that there was no chance that I was coming back there. But uh, still a really close series. And we'll see what happens in Game 3. Pretty much you saw those two games are great examples of what can happen when each deck sets up. So in Game 1 I had the total set up. I had the Rock Ruffs down. I could Bloodthirsty Eyes. I could Hex. I could do everything to disrupt David and take knockouts uh, while David wasn't able to get set up. And in game two, I wasn't able to get set up as quickly and David was able to just take his time, build his board, and then get, get his Metagross into play and then just steamroll me with choice bands hitting 180 every turn. So not a lot I could do about that and we're going to a game three. Fortunately for me, uh, losing game two means that I get to start, which is massive. Uh, it means I will have access to turn 2 Bloodthirsty Eyes, uh, turn 2 Berserk, so I guess my deck is capable of turn 1 Berserk for 180 with Max Elixir, but you got to really hit a lot of cards for that. I have done it, but uh, it's very unlikely, but just being going first, being able to get off a turn 2 Berserk, turn 2 Bloodthirsty Eyes uh, is massive, so we both mulligan there. And so far, David's started with Alolan Vulpix, and that is pretty much his ideal starter. And my ideal starter is probably just Drampa here. Uh, but start with Shaman. And you really can't see my prizes against that dark playmat. But uh, we start, and David does manage to start with the Alolan Vulpix. So, what do I have in my hand? Looks like, at least I have a supporter, so Floatstone, Magma Base comes down, and just going to have to Sycamore here. Okay, so do get a Drampa, but don't get Energy. So, Drampa going to come down, Rockruff going to come down. Both going to take two damage counters from that Magma Base. And I'm going to be able to Ultra Ball and hope that my second Shaman's not prized. If the second Shaman's prized here, that would be a big swing, but it's not, fortunately. And going to grab that. Search, see how many Rock Ruffs and Lycan Rocks I have access to, because that's going to be the key in this matchup. Uh, being able to Bloodthirsty Eyes and Hex in the same turn is absolutely massive. So essentially Lysander Hex in the same turn or Lysander Sycamore is just so good. Uh, so pretty much I just want an energy uh, for the Drampa here. And there we go, do find the energy which is nice. 
Can apply the town map. And yep, so two damage counters the shaman should get from the magma base. And nothing too major prize there. So town map, uh, why do I play it? It just allows me to take, plan my turns out better. And with Bloodthirsty Eyes, you're taking, you're taking knockouts so quickly that uh, you're able to just uh, plan out your prizes, take what you need a little bit, uh, sorry, plan out your turns and take what you need from the prizes a little bit more efficiently. And I don't retreat the Shaman. I don't like that play. I think I should have retreated the Shaman there. There's nothing that's going to threaten my Drampa from David's side. But if he field blowers the float stone off the Shaman, I could be in a tough spot where I can't move it and it gives him an extra turn to just set up. So I, I don't like that play. I, th I should have retreated the Shaman there. And so David needs to get another basic down here. If he doesn't, he could get donked. He didn't have access to the Bridget or the Tapu Lele for the Wonder Tag for the Bridget this game. So potentially uh, in danger here of getting donked. Uh, not that there's anything he could do about that. That's just luck of the draw, but uh, it, is, it is a risk. Okay, so Beldum comes down, so no Donk incoming, but if that's his only Beldum, uh, he could be set back, but no, he has an Ultra Ball, which is great. Unfortunately for him, he draws the Bridget. Uh, one hand too late. And get an Ultra Ball, get down another Beldum probably. Uh, so great that David's going for the second Beldum, it's Oh, so he actually goes for Vulpix. Hmm. He might have a Beldum in hand. No, he doesn't have another Beldum in hand, so this is risky. Uh, because I can just Bloodthirsty Eyes, bring up his only Beldum and knock it out. Uh, he's valuing the Vulpix there, fearing the, the Berserk from Drampa knocking him out, but I think his Beldums might be a little bit more valuable in this situation particularly because I already have a rock rough down. So I have a lot of outs to a Lysander. Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele for Lysander. Uh, Ultra Ball for the Lycan Rock. Uh, so I top deck the Ultra Ball. I think I even have a Lycan Rock in the discard to stretch her back. Try and decide what to discard. I could just stretch her back the Lycan Rock. Either one is fine, but uh, preserving my stretcher here. Again, another conservative play. It's sort of saying, uh, in case uh, I have to make an awkward Sycamore at some point, I can rescue stretcher things back. Uh, discarding the energy and the elixir is fine there because I know that I have an elixir and energy in the prizes anyway. Okay, so going to Ultra Ball, grab a Rock Rough. Oh, okay, so I'm going to Rescue Stretcher back the Lycan Rock in the discard and take the knockout. And this is where you can be a little bit more liberal with your resources with Town Map knowing what you're going to take off the prizes. And yep, so Berserk, going to take the knockout. Going to grab an Ultra Ball here. And that's basically saying, I've got another Lycan Rock coming down next turn. You need to get down two Beldums. And David going to set up here. Draw two, three. And he does have access to another, another Beldum here. And there we see it come down. So if I can restrict him to just one Beldum on the field at any one time, 
Uh, that's going to be really good for me. And since he's got two Vulpix and a Shaman down, that's four prizes. So my prizes are more or less laid out for me at this point. I can just go around Metagross. I never really have to attack into one. Or at least I don't have to attack into one to win the game. So this is a pretty favorable spot for me, I think. And possibly if David had just gotten the second Beldum off the Ultra Ball last turn, he would have been able to Sycamore this turn. Uh, but uh, And then he would have been able to evolve it to Matang. So... Ultra Balling a DC is not nice, but doesn't really matter. Uh, so we're going to Bloodthirsty Eyes again, bring up another Beldum. So this is where Dramp is putting in a lot of work. The only thing I'll say is that I don't have anything beyond this Dramper, so but that's fine at this point. Uh, David doesn't have, is not, it's, it's not possible for him to get off a Giga Hammer next turn. So probably just going to Ultra Ball thin some cards out. Uh, that Rock Ruff is not useful anymore. I've played the Rescue Stretcher. Well, I've, I've got my only two Lycan Rocks on the field, so never going to get off another Bloodthirsty Eyes for the rest of the game. And it looks like I have a pretty decent hand as well. The only thing missing was an energy to attach this turn to the Drampa or the Lycan Rock. But I think uh, I'm willing to give that up uh, for this strong setup here. Okay, so Drampa comes down, two damage counters go on, and we are going to see a Berserk here. Going to take an energy. And David is in a really tough spot. Uh, fortunately for him, I am out of Bloodthirsty Eyes now, so just going to be relying on Lysanders. And so he evolves to Matang. And Sycamores. So let's see, can he get the Wreck Andy Metagross? Doesn't look like he's got it. So pretty big whiff there for David, really unfortunate for him. Or does he have it? He's got an Ultra Ball, does he have a Wreck Andy? I'm just assuming he hasn't got it because he probably would have just slammed it down if he did. Oh, he has got a Wreck Andy. Okay, so just, just debating his options. I'm pretty sure he's got... Or did he bench... No, sorry, he benched that Beldum this turn. My bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, can't evolve. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Should pay more attention to the game. Uh, okay, so he's going to beacon here. So he's got a, an energy on a Beldum, a Matang ready to go. And I'm going to get a prize here with Lysander. And I actually choose the Matang here, and I really don't like this play from me. This is very risky. If I'd just taken out the energy on the Beldum, uh, I, there's absolutely no risk of me getting hit next turn. But now, David can actually knock out this Dramper. He just needs Rare Candy Metagross, Energy, Choice Band, uh, and you think that's a lot to ask, but it's really a not, especially since he was already holding the Rare Candy Metagross. So if he gets a Choice Band here, uh, or even just Energy, Geotech System, and Kukui will be a knockout as well. So uh, that's, a, that's a bad play for me, I think. I should have, if I'd just taken out the Beldum, with the Energy, he never, he wouldn't be able to attack me this turn, and then I could just keep rolling on. But now, things are looking dangerous. And at this point, I'm probably regretting, why did I knock out the Metang? Uh, it's just on autopilot there, and that can sometimes happen. You think, oh, what's more likely to evolve into Metagross than Metang is? But in that situation, uh, you've got to look at the games, the board a little bit more uh, critically. So, missed opportunity for, there, for me there, and we'll see if David can punish that play. He needs a choice band. 
doesn't look like he got one. He does have field blower. And not super relevant, I don't think. And he's just going to have to hit for 150. So he's going to be painfully 10 damage short of the knockout here. So, but it does allow him to sky return a KO next turn, which is pretty nice. So he's, he's definitely not out of it. Uh, one Metagross might be enough to go all the way. So I think, yeah, it's tough to say what the right play is. You could Lysander Shaman for the knockout, and then he's forced to promote Vulpix, but even Vulpix can get a KO with Icy Snow, I think its attack is, for 20 damage, so, uh, and then that would force me to have an energy, uh, a double Coldus even, to get the knockout, so, uh, with my Bench Tramper, so, uh, this, this isn't an easy spot, and it, as, I don't want to harp on about it, but it could have been easily avoided if I just knocked out the Beldum with the, with the energy on it, but, as I said before, this is why we do these things, good learning, good learning, and let's see. I think. Hmm. I think I just want to get another double colors onto the dram bench tramper and protect myself a little bit. Yeah, so that look, looks like what I'm going for here. And do hit the double colors, which is really nice. So a little bit more secure now. I've got a second Dramper going. And just going to Berserk for 150. And now David, he has to retreat. He can't leave that Metagross out. He has to max. He doesn't have to max Potion, but he possibly needs to if he wants to win. So I think his optimal play there is Sky Return for the knockout. So yeah, looks like that's what he's going for and I really like this play from David. Uh, it's gonna sky return the knockout. Uh, does he have access to max potion though? Looks like he doesn't immediately have access to Max Potion. He's going to end me down to three. And he's going to be taking six, I think, still. But once he takes this KO, uh, he'll be down to four prizes, and I'm still at three, so the game is still very close, despite David only having one Metagross. Uh, and then actually once he takes a Shaman off the board, I won't be able to knock out two Vulpix for the game. So this is a really strong play from David. And he's, yep, going to Geotech system. So now I'm sort of thinking, uh, this might be getting away from me here, but at least he doesn't have a Max Potion. And, yep, so there we go. So, just going to promote the Shaman because I have Floatstone. And this is an interesting decision which supporter to take. If I had a supporter in the discard pile, I'd probably play N here uh, just to try and negate any max potion from David. Uh, but since I don't, just going to play the Sycamore. And drawing Lysander off that last card is actually really big. Uh, 
Uh, choice band comes down, not going to be super relevant at this point. Uh, just playing it out to avoid, uh, to thin my deck from in. Take a knockout. And I think probably Floatstone's the ideal prize there. Yep, in case David Lysand is a Lycanroc to try and buy himself a turn. So Max Potion comes down. Uh, and David, not out of it. Not out of it by any stretch. Uh, but I think me drawing that Lysander might be the nail in the coffin. If I didn't have Lysander, then things would get interesting. But as it stands, David's going to have to attach to the bench. And maybe Geotech system to the active and just pass. So not too... what did he play there? Alright, just gonna Skylar, search his deck, is there anything he can do? He's just gonna grab a choice band. So I think I think this game's done and dusted because I drew the Lysander there. Uh, unless David was able to end me out of it, which he wasn't, then I think yeah, this this game's more or less done and dusted. So he just passes, and possibly would have liked to see him geotech there uh, because I don't necessarily need to knock out the Vulpix, so I can just pass this turn. So he probably should have just geoteched because I wouldn't knock out the Vulpix in this spot. And gonna lie sand of the Metagross. Hit it for 180, and that's gonna be the nail in the coffin, I think, for David. It puts him one energy attachment behind. Uh, so basically, he can retreat to the bench, max potion. Um, but I think he's just a little bit too far behind at this point. Uh, he needed this Metagross to, to hit, take two prizes before it took a hit in order for him to win the game. But since it's taken a hit now, I think that should more or less wrap things up. And David just going through his options. Does he have access to a max potion and energy from hand? He can prolong the game for one more turn. Uh, but basically, as I said, it puts him one energy attachment behind. So yes, he can attach from hand, attach from the discard and retreat. Um, but then that would leave his Metagross with no energy. I'll knock out the Vulpix. Then he can max get on two energy on the next turn. But I'll hit the Metagross first. So then, um, uh, so then there's no way, even if, if he can attack again, for him to to win the game, so just going to max potion, uh, just prolonging the game, the inevitable really, and so he's going to attach Geotech, but there's no way for him to get off an attack this turn. Okay, so he's actually going to algorithm here. <laughs> I'm not sure what he can take from his deck at this point that's going to help him that much because I've got the two shot on this on this Metagross. So I'm going to Berserk for 180 again. And David, yep, yeah, just going to scoop it up. So really unfortunate, David wasn't able to set up. I was able to rush him there and uh, managed to take a, take a very close three-game series. I think there are pl plays that could have been made on both sides uh, to make things uh, a, little bit, a little bit more interesting, but 
either way, it was a great series, and thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'll be commentating the final by myself again, so hopefully not sick in my voice. We'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Bye.